Public Enterprises Minister Pravin Gordon has denied that government is planning to undertake a wholesale privatization of uh, rail service SOE Transnet. This after he faced a stern challenge from the Economic Freedom Fighters MP Umpila Maudre, who initially demanded details of the opening bids for the proposed private freight access to Transnet Rail Network. This comes after President Sir Ramaphosa revealed that uh, last year that government was considering allowing private freight rail operators to operate alongside Transnet as part of the country's economic recovery plan. The FF Treasurer General and Member of Parliament, Umpira Maodwe, now joins us to elaborate on her party position on the subject of privatization of SOEs. Umpira, good evening. Thank you very much for your time and coming in tonight. Good evening, Trevor. Good evening to the viewers of Newsroom at home. Are you convinced with the answer that you received uh, yesterday from uh, no, the, no, the minister? Saying, uh, there's a sense that you... you, you uh, or, I don't know whether you're misunderstanding it or they're saying you're misunderstanding what it means, this opening of bids for private companies to operate sections of the freight rail network. It's, it's a private public partnership. It's not handing over the asset. Why, why do you believe it's handing over no, the asset? No, thanks for having us, Tabo. So once you start having concessions and inviting private sector to come and play in your space, you, you are sharing the little bread that you have with the private sector. More so that we're talking about an entity that has got lots of assets because it's very rich in asset base. I mean, Transnet, before I left in 2019, it had 2,500 locomotives, excluding the new ones, 1064 and the, the, the 99. Now, and it had 75,000 wagons, which were in the main coal, uh, dedicated to coal line or to iron ore and some for the general freight. So if you've got such huge asset base, that, that should generally, that, that should ordinarily then translate um, that, those assets into revenue and you are not utilizing them. And I did, I did have this interview um, back in the days to say, you need to sort your assets for the assets to give you the revenue that you need. So we see Transnet that is not sorting its asset. We see Transnet, remember that last year sometime, Transnet went out to invite private sector again to come and check the fleet, if they can lease the fleet to them. Now, the same transnet is now saying we're opening uh, the track for you. So you're going to have a transnet that's, uh, that has privatized its rolling stock. You're going to have transnet that has privatized its uh, rail track. And that will destroy transnet. But it's a trend, to be yeah. honest with you, because we've seen how lots of exodus of critical skills from transnet have uh, been laid off. I mean, last mm -hmm. year alone, uh, there were about 3,000 employees that were laid off. And 10% uh, were trained drivers. And that is the core of Transnet. The biggest uh, operating division in Transnet is Trans Transnet Freight Rail, which in, at the time, in 2016, when Gamo was still the CEO, uh, we moved 226 million tons of cargo. Come 1920, Transnet went down to move uh, 212 million tons of, of cargo. That's when they removed Gamma. But since uh, Madame Poshia came, we've seen the volumes going down. I mean, they went down to 185. Now I'm told they're going down to 175. Yeah, so, so the, I mean, the I issue I is not... Speaking of sweating the asset, I mean, as we speak now, you've got mining companies who are loading trucks with coal, taking it to, to the ports. Because uh, of the it, frustration of transit. Because they're frustrated with this, this yes, thing. So yes. why not bring people who will be able to to use the rail and rent it out, then they must pay something, put an investment, fix it, because we don't have the money to fix it, Kim. There's nothing to be fixed. Transnet owns over 20,000 kilometers of track within the country. If it's not stolen, if it's still there. No, it's still there, it's still operating. No. Unless, it, no, it's still there. The one that has been uh, destroyed is the one of Prasa, which is about just less than 10,000 kilometers of track. But the Transnet one is operating, and it was operating. And, and, and if it's now been stolen, we need to understand how come now, in 2022, we're talking about a stolen track. Now, all I'm saying is, you've got this huge fleet of rolling stock. You've got this massive rail track under you, direct control. You are saying to the private sectors, I've got, because once you invite private sector to say, come and check if you can um, lease some of the wagons of the, of the rolling stock, you are clearly saying you are not utilizing them. Now, why are you not utilizing them? Because the mining companies, they are staking piles and piles of cargo waiting for you to come and move. So there is track available. There is rolling stock available. There were employees available. Of course, they've been uh, now laid off. But I'm saying it's a deliberate effort to collapse Transnet because why would you lay off your critical skills that you need? Transnet is a logistics company owned by the state. It, 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 it is the biggest, actually, in the continent with 
like I said, over 30,000 kilometers of track if you combine it with Prasawan. Now, with 75,000 wagons, nobody owns that in the continent. No one. No one owns 2,500 locomotives in the continent. You've got that. What is happening to those locomotives? And when I asked the minister last night, yesterday, to say, you are saying that uh, you take a decision not to deploy the 1064 locomotives. And as a result of that, now you've seen the drop in the volumes. Why aren't you bringing them back? Because the locomotives are there. Transit is paid for them. Yeah. What's stopping you from utilizing them? If you say that the 2,500 that we had at the time yeah. are now old, they can't be refurbished and all that. Yeah. You've got a new fleet. Why aren't you utilizing them? So the, the idea that we're experimenting with uh, uh, how government and the private sector can cooperate, saying this is a, a service offering that I said in my initial response, this is Godan, he says government needed to attract investment that would ultimately create jobs. No, there's, no invest there's not going to be creation of jobs. I mean, people have been, have been laid off. Today, when I bought my flight to here from Cape Town, my former colleagues were telling me that they just received letters of redundancy. That's the Business Development Department of Transnet Engineering. And I'm assuming it cuts across all the divisions of Transnet. Now, those are the people that we were at the forefront of going to look for business. The business is for Transnet Engineering is in manufacturing. That, that, in that way, you are industrializing the country. You are industrializing Transnet. And then you've got Transnet Freight Rail, which moves the cargo. At my time, when I was still at Transnet Engineering, we had over 13,000 employees. Transnet as a whole had over 60,000 employees. And in the, in the main, they were blacks. They've been laid off, Tabo. They are not there. But this is a deliberate effort by management, honestly, to collapse. Because why would you lay off your people? Why would you go and list your rail stock? And the same strategy they used, by the way, for SAA. You remember that SAA back in the day? They, they, they sold the, the aircraft, and then they leased them back into SAA. So why sell your assets? This is exactly the same strategy. They are going to lease the assets of Transnet to private at a fraction of a cost. They are going to open the track for, for, for private players to come on board at a fraction of the cost. Right now, Transnet is making money through moving of cargo, moving of volumes. 226 volumes that were moved during Sefonga Gama. We've got Porsche Aki now. The volumes have gone down to 175. And you can't blame COVID because, by the way, the mining sector was the first one to open immediately after lockdown level 5. They were the first one to go back to work. So there's stacks and stacks of cargo lying down, not being moved by transit. So we are saying, Godan has failed. Honestly, he must just go and retire and look after his grandchildren. Let's get people who will be running transit uh, to its to back, back to its glory days because we've, we've got evidence. We, we, I mean, we, 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 we had at the time when we were there. So the division that I was in, we were penetrating the whole continent, going to look for work uh, for Transnet so that we can employ more people. That's why at the time you had 13,000 employees. And countries like Ghana, they were very keen. Countries like Botswana, when we built rolling stock for, for, for Botswana, the coaches, the wagons, including the locomotives, uh, maintaining maintenance of the locomotives for Botswana. Where has all that gone to? It has gone to down the drain because the new management came in and said, let's focus internally in South Africa. Let's not go beyond the borders of South Africa. And as a result, we are saying, and we said this again in 2019, to say, once you start having the strategy of inward looking yeah. in South Africa, you are going to be redundant. You are going to have a lot of people that don't have jobs because yeah. you, 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 you've built enough capacity internally for Transnet. Yeah. You've got enough locomotives. You've got enough wagons. Uh, you, are, you are servicing PASA coaches yeah. maximally. So you've already ran out of options yeah. of what to do but, in, but, inside but, the country. But, but also you're saying, well, you're turning a blind eye to, to what? What is the debt now sitting at uh, over a billion US dollars? The what? The debt to Transnet? What is it sitting at? That's exactly the point. You know, at our time, uh, Tabo, Transnet firstly was self-funding. Transnet had huge reserves. You'll remember that at some point, we gave Trans, um, SA Express money over two billion, I think, that you gave. I'm not too sure. I'll have to check my records. But we had so much money that we could even lend another state-owned entity. Today, Transnet is going down because it's not making volumes. Transnet makes its money out of volumes. It's a volume-driven organization. There's nothing you can do if you don't have volumes. And the volumes are there. The mines are there in the country. There's not been an exodus or a closure of a lot of mines in the country. The cargo is there. Why is Transnet not, not moving the cargo? The mining companies are frustrated right now. That's why they are using uh, 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 back to rail. We had a strategy of from, ro from road to rail. Back in That's why we, had, we, we were able to move 226 million tons. But our client, which is the private sector, which is the mining, they don't have the patience because 
if their commodities not being moved, they're losing out because they also make money from, yeah. from commodities. So you, why is the commodity not being moved? Are you saying that's just because they've just fired people? They decided willy-nilly to wake up one day and say, we'll fire people? So, th so there'll be a, a number of things. Uh, the first thing is that they, they're not doing maintenance properly. The second thing is that uh, they are running down um, 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 the assets without maintaining it. Not only the rolling stock, by the way, it including the, the rail track. Uh, we'll have to go check now. From 2019, when we left Transnet, uh, with 20,900 kilometers of track, how much of it now, today, is operational? You'll find that it's, 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 it's too little. But it's because of the maintenance. They're not doing maintenance. The, 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 the locomotives are very sensitive. They're very expensive equipment, piece of equipment, but they also need care. If you want to move, I mean, look at the, 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 the iron ore line. If you want to move a four-kilometer train, you've got to have the right locomotives. You've got to have the right wagons. Now, we are not sure anymore yeah. if they still have that because they are closing factories, Tabo. No, I was told that they, the, they, the coaches... They are, they, they are rigged with immense damages. They are unable to transport goods cheaply, quickly, uh, because there they, are lots of things weighing in, which you're talking about. It's inefficiency and incompetence. Uh, and and, and, and uh, at this particular point, 128 billion rands in debt, that in itself uh, is weighing heavy on, the, on, 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 on this particular of, asset. Why of, not bring of, in people who will be able to take that uh, burden off and, and deal with the inefficiencies? No, of course we're going to have that burden because, as I said to you, what has changed? We still have the same number of rolling stock. We still have the same uh, track lens. We still have the same people that used to run this transit. So it's a question of leadership. There's no leadership. The woman came, and unfortunately she doesn't know what she's doing. That's why you see what was happening. How come during the time of Brian Mulefe and Siabonga Gama, Transnet was flying very high? What happened since then? And, 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 and you know, when we say this is very painful because I'm talking about a woman and I'm a woman, I should be defending a woman. But there's nothing to defend, honestly, because she allowed herself to go into the arena of being led by a clueless and a blind minister of uh, public enterprise who knows nothing about rolling stock. Now, let's bring back the people who have passion. Let's bring back the people who know how to run railways, who've run railways before, who have proven to us that it is possible, it is doable, Tabo. What has changed from 2018, before they fired Gamma, to 2022 is the leadership. And, 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 and it shows that from that leadership, there hasn't been, because Transnet, as I said, is a logistics organization. It, 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 it gets its money from, from moving cargo. You can't move cargo if you don't have the rolling stock. You can't move cargo if you don't have the drivers. How do you let go of 10% of the people that you are laying off are train drivers who are at the main driving these locomotives from point A to point B? Maybe they are not moving uh, the cargo today because there's no train drivers. And why would you lay off people? Why would you lay yeah. off train drivers? Let's talk then broadly about this narrative or rhetoric that uh, I mean you have repeated it today that there is a concerted effort to collapse all state-owned enterprises so that you sell them at a fraction uh, of the cost again today Pravin Gordon Minister of Public Enterprises denying that saying they, there is no such in fact he yesterday he said such such as a rhetoric requires uh, no response because um, there is no intention at all so okay we are okay fine let's let's leave the rhetoric what has he brought on the table, uh, John Nandos, uh, since, since he became the Minister of uh, Public Enterprise? Because what we are seeing is a, is a, is a downward. Um, uh, Transnet is going down. It's not picking up anyway. We are seeing a lot of people exiting Transnet because it's no longer attractive. It's, it's no longer what inspires them. I left Transnet because it was no longer inspirational. And I could see, and by the way, before I left Transnet, I said to my team, the current regime is the one that believes that we should be in focus instead of looking outside the borders of this country. And they look at me as if I'm a mad person. It didn't take long for them to realize that what I was saying is true because what did they do? They closed down Transnet International Holdings, the entity that was supposed to drive manufacturing for Transnet. So rather drive the business development of Transnet. We should lead into the industrialization of Transnet because then we are able to come and bring uh, um, uh, um, uh, clients to manufacture locomotives for them, to manufacture wagons for them, to manufacture coaches, the thing that we used to do. So, Praveen has got no idea of how to run railways. I don't know which department he can be deployed to because he has not proven, Tabo. 
prove me, tell me that I'm wrong. Tell me that, no, you're lying because Pravin, since he came in, the volumes actually moved from 226 million to 250. I want to see that. And I, I'm going to shut up because he will be performing. But there's nothing to shut up because he's not performing. And I'm saying to you, to, just today, as I was coming here, yeah. People were telling me that they received letters of attendance no, no, very they're soon. Still, they're going to we, be we, out we, of their we, jobs. We, they're we going to be unemployed. We can't, we can't be arguing about the inefficiencies. The inefficiencies are there for everyone to see at, 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 at Transnet. But uh, what I'm saying is a strategy has been put on the table and you are flat out rejecting it. No, the strategy that worked, that they should have pursued, is the same strategy of the Africa. We used to call it the Africa strategy at the time. Uh, as somebody was called market demand strategy and all that. But... Really, we were saying, let's go and broaden our wins. Let's go and explore out there. Because we've been doing this. I mean, Transnet, by the time I left, it was over 150 years of, of existence. And we've been maintaining locomotives that uh, would come in the country, being assembled here, our people being used for cheap labor and all that. And then at the end of the day, we managed, as Transnet, to manufacture our own locomotive manufacture our own wagon. So we were competitive in the market. We could go in anywhere in the continent to go and compete with international uh, companies. And we, we, we made strides, Tabo. We, we, we deployed rolling stock even in West Africa. Uh, we were pursuing that strategy. So, but when they came in, they said, no, don't look at outside the border. Look inside the border. And we cautioned them that not with the asset base that you have. It's not enough. The commodities are not enough to move um, um, uh, to, to the commodities are not enough with this current. You've built so much capacity for yourself that the community will not be able to cater for this. You've got less commodity and more rolling stock. And I'm telling to you, uh, Transnet has got over 20,000 kilometers of track. The second biggest in the continent is Egypt, with just over 10,000 kilometers of track. And if you were to look of how they are running their, their, their railways, they are very efficient. And uh, it's state owned as well. So yeah. we, 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 we find the ruling party which does not appreciate what it means to be a state owned entity. And they forget that this trust that they inherited, by the way, during apartheid was state owned. Now, they are being misled by people who are not in government because those private, those, uh, uh, private people are the same people that could have owned Transnet before. Um, that, 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 you know. Yeah. Very is, is, critical. Is, is there any cleanup at uh, Transnet currently, do you believe, which may involve prosecution of certain people? I don't know. We wait to see. We want to see that. We want to see that happening. We want to see, actually, the cleanup should be starting from the current management. They must all go. They've got no idea what's happening. They, they, they've caused a huge embarrassment on our people. Our people are now going to be unemployed. If I had stayed at Transnet, I would have been unemployed myself. Because that is the department that they are destroying, the business development department. The very department that should actually go and look for work for Transnet. Now, if they even destroy the hunters, who's going to hunt for Transnet? Because you, you, you are laying off the hunters that must go and look for food for you. Who's going to look for food for you? So they, they are all blind in all due respect. They must just humble themselves and, and, and agree that they have failed this country and resign and let's get the new people to run, trans to run Transnet. You can still bring back Sia Bongagama, you can still bring back Brian Mulefe, you can bring back anyone who has got a clue of how to run the railways. Yeah. But don't bring people who have got no clue of how to run the railways. You and when they fail, you get shocked. You, you, you are saying bring back the people who have been mentioned in the State Capture uh, Commission of Inquiry? They will clean themselves. They will, they will go to court. And I mean, Sia Bongagama has been fighting his case, Tabo, um, from 2018 when he was moved. And uh, he has not been prosecuted till today. So if he has done anything wrong, can the law take its course? And then we'll close that chapter of Sia Bongagam. I'm not here to speak for him. I'm not his ambassador. But all I'm saying is that all right. he, I'm during his I'm time, I'm moved I'm 226 I'm million times. And it, that's something that we salute <laughs> him for. We're out of time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for coming on. That is the EFF Treasurer General there and Member of Parliament, Mpile Mawote. When we continue.